Hello guys, so welcome back to my YouTube channel. And so for today's vlog, we will be talking about the most common load you will find in a vessel. And this is the electric motor. This might also be the most common job that you will be doing on board. The maintenance, monitoring, and the overhauling of this electrical motor. 90% of the load that you will find in the vessel are inductive load and this is mainly because of this electrical motor. Most of the time you will be doing this overhauling for those electrical motor which are located or exposed to the environment and those electrical motor which is having this start and stop operation. The principle for this maintenance and checking of this electrical motor are all the same regardless of its size. So come and join me in this new learning. Whenever you will touch any moving machinery, it is a must to isolate the power well and do a no voltage test. After that, you will check the continuity of its lines. I made a separate video on how to do the insulation resistance checking, so I'll just put the link down below. The continuity test is for you to know if the winding is still in good condition. If you need to replace completely the motor, it needs rewinding or it only needs cleaning. And before dismantling anything, it is a must to put markings on the covers and flanges for you to be able to put them back as it is after doing the overhauling. So now, let us focus on this freshwater generator ejector pump. The breaker for this ejector pump is tripping and the electrical motor is overheating. Since the setup is that the pump is connected to the coupling, we need to dismantle this whole electrical motor and put it onto the workshop and see if the problem is coming from the pump or onto the electrical motor. As you can see, we put markings onto the wire orientation so that later once we put them back, we will still have the correct rotation of this electrical motor. So we bring this electrical motor to the engine room workshop and we will start dismantling it. After removing the pump, it is really difficult to rotate the shaft of this electrical motor. So we need to remove uh, this coupling. And then we will start checking the bearings and the windings inside. So we managed to remove the coupling for the pump and then the next thing that we need to do is to remove this key. So removing it, we will just use punch and hammer so that we will be able to do it. So the markings that we put onto this uh, cover of the motor is these markings and we were able to remove this key. As a piece of advice, everything that you remove, put them in one place or container so that once you will put them back, you will not have a missing piece. After that, on the back side, we need to remove this cooling fan of the electrical motor. We need to remove the circ clip onto it and then we will start forcing to remove this um, cooling fan. And since it is already rusted, so this is the way how we were able to remove it. It is actually plastic and we don't have this location where we can put the special tool or the puller onto this one. And then we also need to remove this key for this cooling fan. This is to free the cover once we will remove it or dismantle it. After that, we proceeded into removing the front cover and also the back cover. Again, it is a must that you need to put markings onto this one so that the orientation would still be the same and you will not having a hard time once you will assemble it back. 
put an extra care in removing this cover and avoid damaging it and after that we can just easily pull it so this is the condition of the bearing I'm a bit surprised because they use an open type bearing for this electrical motor wherein there is no greasing point so it will actually dry up in return so for this one this is not the original bearing that you should be putting onto this electrical motor and onto the driving end this is the condition that we found out that's why i chose this electrical motor for this vlog because i just want to see you the condition that we are having onto this one so there are a lot of metal pilings found onto the windings and onto this area and the one that we suspect is because of the bearing is already touching the front cover of this electrical motor and it damaged it so the drive and bearing cannot be rotate anymore so this is the culprit why we have an overheating or overloading electrical motor so since we found the metal filings we then check the line to line uh, continuity or resistance and the line to ground continuity test and good thing that it is still in good condition so after that it is now time to pull the bearing we use this special tool while the other crew is cleaning the winding we will use electrosolve for this one so that we will completely clean the winding after that we both remove these two bearings using this puller good thing is that even though we have a damaged bearing it is just easy to pull them out from the shaft it is a must to use the right bearing if it is a closed type or an open bearing so that the grease or lubrication inside will be maintained if it is an open bearing you need to grease the electrical motor monthly and if it is a closed type you don't need to lubricate it since there is already lubrication inside and it will not be removed even if the electrical motor is running so this is the type of bearing we have 6308 on the driving end this is the damaged one so we use a brand new one and put it on the induction heater and we will use around 90 degrees celsius for this one so that it would be easy for us to put it back onto the shaft if you do not have this type of equipment just put your bearing near to your main engine we hit the bearing or the inner diameter especially of the bearing to expand it and it would be easy for us to put it onto the shaft because sometimes if it is cold it is really difficult and sometimes people use hammer to just put it onto the shaft and this damage already the brand new bearing and so while we are hitting this inner diameter of the bearing we just clean a little bit this shaft and look at how easy it would be to be put inside so this is just how easy it was same thing we did onto the other bearing since the winding is still in good condition when we check line to line and line to ground it is still in healthy so for those who will be asking line to line should be in good contact around 0.1 to 1.2 ohms and line to ground should be in infinity measurement and we just use this spray to clean the windings we do not have enough electrosolve since we used it already onto one of our cargo hold fans and this is the way how it looks like after 24 hours we let it dry and after that we will just simply um, assemble the electrical motor the way how it was so uh, assembling it back I will not show it anymore since you will just follow the same thing as what you did and after that we actually painted the electrical motor it is a must that you completely do this painting and please do not paint the nameplate as this will be a good reference once 
you want to take the information of this electrical motor after that it would be easy to connect the wirings back since we already put markings on our electrical motor i forgot to mention talking about the name plates the bearing has uh, this bearing number on it and normally it is only on one side and once you will put it onto the shaft it is a must that you need to put it in an orientation you where you can read uh, this bearing number so that the next time the nameplate will be removed onto this electrical motor then you will still have reference for the type of bearing that you need to use again regardless of its size the principle for the electrical motor or checking the electrical motor is just the same you just need to do the insulation resistance check line to ground and line to line and then you need to work in a safe manner especially for those big motors and use the proper lifting tools check if they are still in good condition and be nice to every crew because they are the ones that will be helping you in this kind of difficult or heavy lifting job i would like to take this opportunity to thank you guys for all your support we are now almost 32,000 in this youtube channel so that's it guys i hope you learned something from this video and this is your lucky jake and see you